Good morning, guys. I want to tell you that vindication comes from the Lord. You don't have to justify yourself. You don't have to try to make people understand what your calling and your gifting is. You don't have to try to prove yourself. Why? Because God will do so in his own timing. You know, when Jesus was brought before his accusers, the Bible teaches us that he stayed silent. And beloved, sometimes we have to learn how to be silent. You don't always have to try to redeem and prove yourself. Just be quiet. When people say all manner of wicked things, when they speak lies against your name, don't come against them. Go to the Father and plead your case and pray for them. Mm -hmm. And God, it is God who is going to vindicate you. So just be patient and whatever you do, don't operate in the flesh. Don't try to prove yourself to people because you're dead to this flesh. So what people talk about you? They talked about Jesus. So what they don't understand you? So what they they um, misrepresent you? Are they whatever they mock and slander your name? That's okay. Don't you understand? You got to have thick skin if you're going to share the gospel, if you're going to be an evangelist, if you're going to be a witness for Christ. You have to have thick skin. Think about all that Christ went through. He blessed his enemies. We have to bless those who persecute us and leave justice to God. Okay? I want to read Psalms 43 because this is where the Father took me in my morning devotion and it spoke to my heart. You know, this is why we have to get in the secret place and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to us in the scriptures what he wants to feed us that day. Give us this day our daily bread. Isn't that in the Lord's prayer, right? So we have to allow him to do that, to spiritually feed us and to spend time in the secret place. So every morning when I get up, the first thing I do, you know, I pray, I seek God, I get my Bible to see where he wants me to uh, focus on today to get my daily bread. And today he led me to Psalms 43. And it says, vindicate me, my God, and plead my cause against an unfaithful nation. Rescue me from those who are deceitful and wicked. You know, there's a lot of deception going around. Not everything that says, Lord, Lord, like I always says, is a true believer of the most high God. So we have to ask for protection. And in this Psalm, David is saying, protect me from those who are deceitful, who pretend to be my friends, but they're secretly my enemies. They're wicked in their heart. They say they love me, but in their heart, they have war for me. And in this hour, it's so hard to tell sometimes the sheep from the goat. So you have to allow the Lord to... Let him rescue you. Don't try to rescue yourself. Let God rescue you from this deceitful and wicked. Because how many of you know God will expose people? He will expose their motives, their true heart. You just have to trust in the Lord and have a pure heart toward God. Have a pure heart toward them as well. That's really important to keep your heart pure. That's why we give it to God. That's why David said, vindicate me. Oh my God. He didn't say man vindicate me. He went up in these streets trying to vindicate himself. Look, I'm not like this. Let me tell you about this person. They lie. No, he let God vindicate him. He says, why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by the enemy? David's feeling oppressed by the wicked people around him, the enemies. Why are they able to say all of this nonsense? Why are they able to treat me in this way? Why does it seem like they're having the upper hand? But how many of you know God is doing something in all things? Everything, even the wicked, even the evil things that are done to the righteous, he turns it to our good. We just got to be patient to see what the Lord is doing. But sometimes we feel such despair. We feel like, God, I'm walking with you. Why must I go through this? Why are, are, are people coming up against me? Why is the enemy rising against me? Because people have open doors in their life and they let the enemy walk in and cause all kind of havoc. And it's spirits. You're not fighting against flesh and blood, but you're fighting against spirits, uh, uh, spirits in high places, right? Ephesians 6. And so... We just have to understand that this war isn't just a, against mere people, but spirits within them. And that's why, you know, when Jesus, when Peter didn't want Jesus to go to the cross, he looked past Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan. You save her not the things of God. Now, Peter was a man of God, but he allowed an open door where Satan used him in that moment. So we just have to be careful. That's why we take everything to God. But he's feeling hopeless. He says, send me your light and your faithful care. Let them lead me. 
He says, send me your light, guys. And when we're going through despair and we're feeling like we're in darkness, we got to say, Lord, send your light. Send your faithful care. Say that with me. Send your light, Lord. Send your faithful care. And guess what? God is faithful to do that. But he went to God. He depended on God, not his own flesh, not his own strength. He went to God and said, send me your light and faithful care. So th there's a principle in that. There's a prayer within the scripture. Hallelujah. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God, my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the lyre, O oh God, my God. Even in his despair, he's saying, I'm going to give you praise. Take me to the holy mountain. Light your faithfulness. Lead me to the holy mountain so that I can praise God so that I can go before his altar. And how many of us need to go before the altar, even in our despair, even in our pain and say, thank you, God. I just want to worship on you. I just want to love on you. I just want to praise you. You are almighty. You are the most high God. You are the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. And you, I'll put my trust in. Just worship. There's something powerful about our praise. You take your eyes off of yourself, your circumstance, and you put them on God. And then God helps you. He helps you to get through whatever it is that you're getting through. He cleanses your spirit and your soul because the word is so powerful. It cuts through joint and marrow. It discerns the thoughts. It discerns your heart. Hallelujah. The spirit of God does all of that. Do you know that the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is what resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead? Oh, is he so powerful? This is why you got to acknowledge the Holy Spirit. You can't do no mighty works without him. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. Oh, I love how David talks to himself. He's encouraging himself. He's saying, put your hope in God. Put your trust in him, for I will praise him yet, my Savior and my God. When you're feeling down, when you're feeling defeated, your praise is so critical. Your praise is so important. You got to talk to yourself. You got to say, self, put your trust in God. Self, get up. We're going to glorify God. We're going to honor him and who does great and mighty works. So remember that. Vindication comes from the Lord. This unfaithful nation that came against the anointed, they will not be able to stand you know, it's almost like the father's laughing at him. This unfaithful nation, the hypocrisy of this person, they claim to be a believer, but here they are doing everything that they're claiming you're doing. And they don't even have eyes to see because they have unjust scales. This unfaithful nation comes against my anointed. How dare they? Put your hope and trust in God. Take it before the father. You have to have thick skin if you're going to walk and be set apart with God. Because they're going to come for you. The enemy is going to come for you, your character, and all that you stand for. But you got to know who you are in Christ. And you got to let the Lord vindicate you. Stop trying to prove yourself. I see so many people trying to prove themselves. This person's not doing this. This person don't support me. This, this, and that. Making whole videos. Keep your hope and faith in God. Keep moving and sharing the gospel. You got to know not everybody's going to like you. You got to not know that everybody's not going to get you. You got to know you're not going to get support from everybody. Keep going. It's not about you anyway. It's about the message of Christ. And too often I'm seeing people getting caught up on what their haters are doing and saying, your haters are your promoters. Give them a hand clap. Thank you for pushing the message and the gospel for, because guess what? They're going to come see you because they want to know what the hype is about. So, you know, my brothers and sisters, don't get caught up in all of that. That's a distraction. And it's also, you know, it gets people thinking, you know, oh, I don't even want to be a part of that, you know? Keep your eyes focused on Christ. All right, guys, I love you. Remember, you are the head, not the tail, above only and never beneath. Bye.